So let's talk about configuring the effect for uh, micro front rims. I'm going to show you some code and I will share the code on my screen also. So we have to have some uh, libraries and loaders actually when uh, doing this. So we we can uh, have the uh, you know, shared uh, NPM packages also here. And uh, we can have a monorepo approach wherein uh, all the code will be on, on one uh, workspace only. So that it will be easy for managing. And um, I, I'm to, I already told you that uh, module federation plugin is responsible for running the code runtime, different MAP and connecting with each other so that uh, you don't, you just need to make some changes in package.json files and uh, you know webpack config files. You can have the shared git repository also uh, and uh, so that you can put your code in multiple repositories or you can put the code into one uh, git repository also and that put that put git repository into the production database while deployment. Right. So you can have HTTP uh, request also at one place, uh, state management at one place, APIs at one place, like one place when I say that means it can be a container or one repo and uh, you can utilize them in other services. So obviously you have a reusable components uh, like let's say header repository is there. So uh, header, header code is uh, header and footer code is needed in all the pages. So you can uh, reuse that in different MAPs. Uh, that is how you can uh, share the uh, code, okay. So, always establish the versioning and compatibility practices. Why? Because uh, your code, let's say there are, I said there are four uh, MFEs. So, one code can have uh, dependent code on another MFE. So, you must have the version management uh, in place so that, you know, it should not break, okay. So, one version should connect to another version only. Uh, so you need to also document the shared dependencies. This is just I am telling you the best practices because uh, it's very important. Because otherwise, uh, micro front end implementation can be very very challenging. And uh, always think about uh, what kind of technology stack you are going to use. What is the team structure? Who will do what? And accordingly, start working on that. So you can also combine multiple approaches also if it suits uh, for your uh, implementation. And you can. Uh, do that. So, uh, to configure module federation in Webpack, you need to make changes to both the container application and the remote micro front end. So, this is the example how it is done. So, you see on the first line, you see on the first line, HTML uh, Webpack plugin is uh, imported first of all using the require uh, method. And module federation plugin is also implemented, uh, you know, received here. So that we can use here. You see both the plugins which are constant variables are used here. We are creating by using new method. I already told in my last video. So uh, <clears throat> let's say in the uh, you see in the module federation I am giving the name and it is a container. So you can very easily understand that this is a container application and I am talking about the remotes. So how many remotes I have? I have two remotes here. One is 3001 and 3002. So the name is remote 1 at the this remote 2 so these names are very important these names are very very important you will realize what they what critical uh, role they play actually okay so uh, here if you see uh, this is the remote uh, this is the webpack uh, uh, configuration of another uh, mfe which is a remote 1 you see in the last thing last uh, this is the container right you are, how do you know what is this? You can see the name and you can recognize which webpack JSON is that, webpack config is that. And this is calling two MFEs, one is remote 1 and one is remote 2. So this is remote 1, uh, I am telling the uh, remote entry file here, file name can be anything. So default is remote entry generally and I am exposing the button component here from remote 1 and exposing means I am allowing, allowing to, allowing any other MFE to use my React JS code. This is what I am saying. Okay. So button component I have implemented and I want anybody to use that as a uh, shared uh, repo. And then here I am saying that uh, it should be uh, the, at one point of time there, there will be only one according. So now important thing is here what container is doing is it is not exposing himself. You see container, container is not exposed. So nobody can uh, you know, get hold of container code but it is 
mentioning that I will have two remotes. One is remote one and one is remote two. Remote one on three zero one, remote two on three zero two. Right. So this is very important to understand. And what this guy is doing, remote one, it is just exposing his button component. It is not saying that I need any remote. If we can have uh, same component, same uh, repo as a remote as well as an, uh, the exposure. Okay, so you need to understand this very. This is very important. But I don't want. That's why I have not given that configuration. So name represent the name of the remote micro front end. File name specifies the name of the generated remote entry file. You can change anything. Like you can change the name. You can change the remote entry file. And exposes is very important. Uh, you can have one or more different uh, component also. So don't worry that you can only share only one uh, one uh, component. You can share as many components as you want. So okay. So.